Hello and welcome back to Partimito where today I'm going to be sharing my stunning Moroccan inspired chicken recipe. Not by any means a proper Moroccan dish but it's super delicious nonetheless. We're going to kick it all off by halving and finely dicing one medium sized onion using a super sharp knife. Not only will it make quick work of your prep but it actually slices through the onion cleanly instead of bruising and tearing its way through. This in turn actually releases less sulphur and it doesn't make you look like you're having an emotional meltdown while it's trying to cook. Then just go in with a few cloves of garlic, I'm using four small ones just crushing them lightly to release the skin then very quickly slicing them down as thin as I can and running my knife through them a couple of times just to break it down some more doing it this way actually helps the sweet and savouriness follow through a lot more without getting that bitter aftertaste then I have these three incredible tomatoes off the vine again you can use tin tomatoes but it won't bring that same tartness and sweetness that comes with you know fresh vine ripened tomatoes the complexity and depth of flavour that you get from using fresh is quite measurable if you're doing a side by side comparison. Nonetheless, you want to dice these up too. And now here we have a behemoth of a chicken breast. You're only going to need about 5 to 600 grams, so take your clean sharp knife and fashion those strips into consistent small cubes. About a couple centimetres cubed should do the trick. We want to keep them consistent so we have even cook times. Now grab yourself a large pan with high walls, also known as a pot, um, and get some oil in there, vegetable or olive, but about two tablespoons worth. Once that's reached a medium heat, pinch in some whole cumin, about a tablespoon's worth, and let it roast off until it becomes nice and fragrant before adding in your chopped onion. Now you want to sweat this concoction down with a pinch of maldon salt, just until the onions become translucent, and obviously your house starts smelling like an Indian restaurant. Once they start looking like this, go in with about a teaspoon of crushed chilies and about two teaspoons of ginger garlic paste. Now for the spices, go in with about a level teaspoon of Ras Al Hanout, which is basically a North African garam masala. It's stunning and it's so fragrant. Then what you want to do is marry that with a teaspoon of Danajiru with a pinch of curry powder, a pinch the size of half a teaspoon. After that you want to go straight in with the chicken and let those incredible flavours and aromatics infuse the chicken. If you want to add in chickpeas, now would be the time. Now once your chicken takes on a bit of colour and it's mostly cooked through, it should look a little something like this. You'll notice some fun forming at the bottom of the pan. Don't worry, you haven't messed this up. That's actually going to help boost this to another level. So go in with your tomatoes and about a teaspoon of harissa powder another Middle Eastern take on paprika. I add in the harissa at this point because it actually burns quite easily being paprika based. So buffered with the tomatoes we can take full advantage of its incredible flavour. Cook it through until your tomatoes break down structurally and become super soft and at this point we're going to actually elevate the whole dish by covering it with about 300 millilitres of chicken stock. I'm just using a cube in hot water but if you have homemade stock definitely definitely go with that. And finally I'm just going to finish it off with some finely chopped coriander, stirring in some dry parsley as well which will help cut through the deep richness and bring out a fresh herbaceous component to the dish. And then you just want to let it sit around for about 15 minutes, occasionally stirring it through but we want it to eventually thicken up and all the flavours really sort of concentrate down. You'll know when it's ready when you're able to scrape the bottom of the pan and it'll leave a clean trail behind it. Serve it on a bed of steaming rice or lemon infused couscous and sprinkle it with some incredible sharp feta over the top. Bon appetit, super simple, very quick and it's almost healthy. If you enjoy this recipe and want to see more, drop a like down below and stay subscribed. If you want to show your support, stop by my Patreon page, link down below. Happy cooking.